Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to my new video where we are going to be going over t five things that every single Silas player needs to know. Now, um, I am releasing this video right uh, when he is released on the live servers, so um, they aren't going to be the most in-depth tips, but I think they're going to give you a base understanding that you can bring into your first game of playing Silas that I think can be very, very beneficial. Um, if I could just help one person uh, <laughs> not come into my ranked games and just play Silas first time, and maybe give him a little bit of background knowledge help them out that just a little bit so he doesn't feed I will be happy with this video my name is Lolfit I do educational content um, I peaked at uh, diamond three if you're curious about my experience I play mostly mid top and support um, a little bit of ADC and absolutely no jungle so if you're curious about those kind of roles I can help you out a lot with mid top and uh, support in any mage really um, I think that's kind of uh, my specialty so uh, without a further ado let's jump into it now I want to talk about Silas and how unique and how exciting of a champion he is with his ultimate he gets to steal other people's ultimate abilities what I want you to keep in mind with Silas though is he isn't the safest blind pick you can get very easily countered by people taking um, ultimates that aren't going to really work too well with his ultimate. Also, he's a melee champion, so if you're thinking about taking him into a lane, he can get harassed a little bit. So just keep in mind that if you're the first pick, I mean, the first week you might have to be able to pick him, uh, the first pick if you want to play him, but um, he isn't going to be the safest blind pick. He is going to be a little bit, um, you, you are going to be able to counter him in certain respects. So I want you guys to keep that in mind. And that will wrap up tip number one for Silas. All right, and for tip number two, I really want to talk about this, guys, because this is going to be extremely important. This is what's really going to separate the poor Silas players from the very adept Silas players is, let's turn off this real quick, is his passive. Now, it is a just a kind of a, a sheen effect that scales with a couple different things, scales with AD, leveling, and AP. So keep this in mind when you are looking to do your combos. Now, uh, the great part about this actually is really cool is you can proc your passive twice on your E, so you get that, and then you can throw another E, and then you see you get another whirlwind effect um, with this. And then this is also a unique sheen effect because it is going in an AoE. So after every skill you use in your combo, I want you to try and weave in a auto attack, and it's really going to maximize your damage quite a bit. Um, even it's not basic abilities, so it's off ultimates as well. So keep this in mind. Uh, <laughs> my cat is going absolutely insane. Um, when you are playing Silas, and I think this is really going to enable your ability to win the trades, and also this might open up um, different item builds that might be nice with Lichbane. I have no idea about Nasher's Tooth, um, but Lichbane is probably going to be a beneficial item for you when you are snowballing because you do have to weave in auto attacks. You're more like a Diana or a Fizz. You are not like a Zareth or a Cassiopeia or a Karthus where um, you, you really rely on getting off your um, auto attack. So keep this in mind and that will wrap up number two. Okay, and jumping into tip number three. Now, I want to talk about one of my absolute favorite abilities on Silas that I think is going to have a rather large effect and can be used quite beneficially um, when used in the right spots. Now, this is Kingslayer. This is his W. This is when he is doing his kind of his little bit of a charge in. Um, Silas lunges at the enemy magic force dealing uh, that magic damage, and it is turns into an execute when below 40% health. So generally in early trades, when the cooldown is very long, you might want to save it until a little bit later in the combo. If it's going to be the difference between casting it um, at below 40% and uh, above 40%. Also very similar um, with the healing part of this is his ability to heal more when he is at the lowest health. Someone is laughing at where I got placed. <laughs> Um, okay, he's going to get a special shout out for in the video from uh, Report Me for Living. Um, but uh, it, when, you are probably only going to have one of these cooldowns in a trade. And if you are losing a trade and trying to run away, say you're getting chased down a little bit, wait until you are below the 40% threshold and you will get a lot larger of a heal. That could be the difference between um, winning and uh, losing. So that will wrap up this tip. Um, and as always, guys, if you have any tips, I'd love to hear uh, what you have to think in the comments down below. <laughs> All right, let's get into this tip and we're going to be talking about trading with Silas. Now, when you are... <laughs> 
reporter is getting a kick out of it. Um, when you are going into uh, a trade, and when you are looking into a trade, I think that you should really take a look at his kit. Now, he is melee, so he is going to take a lot more harass than someone that is at range. But we have two great ways of knowing their damage um, that they are going to be throwing on you. So you have a shield through your E when you proc the dash and then you also have a W heal. So what I want you to do when you are looking for trades against people in the top lane is when you are about to get hit, say they charge up a Q, say uh, Garen speeds up and does that really loud sound animation when he is about to Q you, I want you to throw your E before he reaches you so you're gonna take a lot of that Q damage on your shield and you, after a bit of damage is taken, after the trade is about to um, be done, you want to W and get as much healing as possible possibly proccing the 40 percent and not overhealing yourself so you are taking you are getting the absolute maximum out of these defensives and you are taking a trade it's very similar to how renekton wants to just take any trade and then he q heals up you want to look at this um so kind of disregard these runes these are just um runes that i was using earlier on a different champion but one rune that i think is going to be extremely important for silas is revitalize um because it's going to increase your shielding and healing and again it has that 40 percent modifier that is going to be very effective with this 40% modifier. This rune was single-handedly built for Silas. This is a must-have in my opinion. I, I might look back at this video and be like, oh wait, that seems pretty poor now. But to me, right now, being able to increase both your heals and shields and get them amplified when you're at low health is going to be extremely important for a melee champion that um, doesn't really have an invulnerability, doesn't really have a just a super like um, like a fizz E that can just stop so much damage or a resurrect like Atrox. This is going to be extremely important for this AP Bruiser playstyle. I kind of see it a, him a little bit uh, like a Diana where he has a dash, he has a shield, but then he also has a heal. And uh, I, I don't know what the damage thresholds differences are going to be between the two, but I really think you should look into taking Revitalize and it will make your trades that much better. All right, and for the final tip, what I'm going to talk about is Silas has a bit of a unique skill set and types of skill shots. I want to uh, just kind of emphasize that you guys should be going into the practice tool and getting used to his distances, ranges, and the unique parts of his kit before you go into ranked. I think this is going to be extremely beneficial, especially if you don't want to get too far behind in the MMR race uh, when you are just first starting out. And the first thing I want you guys to practice is understanding that where the chains cross is going to leave the impact so um, it's going to do a little bit of extra damage and increases the slow so it's really important to get the little crater where it uh, where they cross over to hit the enemy it's going to provide a lot more it's almost equivalent to what the atrox q crits are on the edge of the blade it's going to be almost that important so um just a quick understanding for you guys if you want to do a max range obviously you would try and um, make them not uh cross until super late in the chain but if they're right on top of you if they're like a master yi um you want to be doing something like this to get uh, both parts of that queue. Obviously, it's going to be different when you have multiple targets and you want to um, maximize just the long queue chain damage. But when you are fighting someone that uh, in a 1v1 situation, I want you to be extremely cognizant of where you want this crater to um, go and just kind of explode and give them the slow and extra damage. So that is going to be a very important part of being able to understand where how you want to throw out your Q skill shot dependent on where the enemy is. Next up, we have his E. Now, his E is very similar to what Camille is, but it doesn't have to stick on walls. You can do it anywhere. But a couple things I want you to practice is just the different ranges on how you can use this ability. It can be used as a dodge and then an all-in. Um, a great example for this would be something like uh, a Lux. You're going against a Lux and you're just trying to bait out a Q, right? When you see the Q, you dodge the Q and E in. It does not always have to be used forward because the second part of the E dash is quite long um, compared to the first part of the E dash, which is a little bit short. So that is going to be a very um, different type of uh, skill shot than you are used to having both parts and again always want to proc both parts of the petrocyte burst on your E when you are looking to maximize damage and not just looking for chase down potential. So if you master these Q and E skill shots, it's going to be quite beneficial. Now going over into the ult, um, I think this champion is going to be great for people to learn. If you are not super concerned with climbing, you can get very good at understanding the, a bunch of different enemies alts and it's going to give you a lot more game knowledge and be like, oh, wait a minute, when I picked that Leona ult, there was a bit of a delay. You're able to flash it quite easily. Um, it only slows on the outside of the circle so i think playing 
this champion, I know it's going to have a little bit of a high skill cap because it is a melee champion with um, a, a little bit of a, a an odd kit. I think this is going to really help people that are looking to learn um, and get as much game knowledge as possible because you're going to be able to use so many different alts and it's going to be quite exciting to see in game. I personally can't wait. 30 second cooldown, which is absolutely awesome. And you can use a bunch of different ultimates. There's a bit of a cooldown if you want to use it on the same person. There's a 200% modified uh, cooldown. And also it converts um, the ratios into AP ratios, which is very interesting because I was a little bit concerned, say if someone has like a Darius ult that scales a bit off of AD and you use it for Silas and you have AP, is it going to do zero damage? Well, they address that and this is going to be an absolutely amazing kit. I hope you guys enjoy Silas. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please remember to like and subscribe if you enjoyed the content. Um, and if you guys want to join the streams, I'm probably going to be doing a 12-hour stream uh, this weekend and we're going to be doing a... Um, we're going to be doing 5v5 customs with uh, the viewers, and it's going to be a lot of fun. So I hope to see you out. We're going to be streaming right here on YouTube. And as always, guys, you take it easy.